Good afternoon, I'm John Phelps with NAMT. Thank you for joining today's webinar, EMS Education Going Virtual. We appreciate you taking the time to attend this webinar to learn how to take your education business online. By attending today's webinar, you are eligible to receive one hour of CAP-C Continuing Education Credit. An email regarding how to apply for your CE will be sent at the conclusion of this webinar. We are excited to welcome our education colleagues and guest presenters for today's webinar, Mr. David Page, Michael Caduce, and Felix Marquez. We will be turning the webinar over to David shortly, but first want to recognize our sponsor and share some webinar tools. NAMT would like to recognize our sponsor for today's webinar. On behalf of NAMT, we extend a warm thank you to Jones and Bartlett Learning for their continued support in advancing EMS education and the profession. A handout of the current NAMT education policy has been provided to you for this webinar. To download this handout from this session, click the name of a handout to access it. The handout file will automatically down start downloading from your default web browser. Click the downloaded file at the bottom of the browser to open or save it. Please note that due to the size of today's webinar audience, participants' lines have been muted to maximize audio performance. We do, however, want to hear from you. At the end of our presentation today, we will conduct a question and answer session with our panelists. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the questions feature in your GoToWebinar toolbox, and feel free to post questions for the presenters to the question box throughout this webinar. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be addressed during the webinar. NAMT will post unanswered questions from today's webinar on the NAMT website along with a recording of this presentation. Please note that a chat box is not available through this webinar platform. While we do not anticipate technical difficulties, if you are experiencing any technical issues or need the assistance of an administrator, please send an email to webinar at naemt.org. We're ready to get started. Once again, it's NAMT's pleasure to introduce our speakers. Mr. David Page is the Director of the Pre-Hospital Care Research Forum at UCLA and Field Paramedic with Alina EMS in Minneapolis-St. Paul area. He serves as the Chair of the International Paramedic Registry, member of the NAMT Education Committee, and liaison to the Latin American Regional Steering Committee. David has over 30 years of experience in EMS education and 20 years of experience in online education. Please welcome the very low pixelated DEF 1999 image of Mr. David Page. I want to know where you got that because if if I find out that person's in trouble. So thank you, John, and thank you NAEMT for hosting this wonderful webinar. I want to introduce our co-hosts and uh, and heckle our my my dearest friends. Felix Marquez is the president and CEO of Orlando Medical Institute. He is uh, a 15 year veteran of the Orlando Fire Department. Has uh, been an NAEMT instructor uh, and training center for a long long time. Uh, educator for over 20 years and uh, uh, 25 years as a paramedic. But uh, best of all, married to Abby, who's really actually the brains behind the operation and uh, uh, thank you for being with us here today it's just a, always fun to teach with you uh, we were in Guatemala together it was fun then and uh, and it is fun today even even through this pandemic we, we, we it feels like we can't we can't be uh, closer to our friends but we're at least close virtually so thank you for coming on Honor appreciate it Honor to be here is this what you look like? Abby passed me this photo. It says this is a face when you may have to make a decision, right? Uh, it's a it's a candidate of you in a meeting. I can see it. Yeah, that's me. Um, when you think your employees and your senior staff is listening to you and paying attention and writing notes on their computers or their phone, and nope, this is what they're doing. I really like the one that you've got uh, the candidate in the ambulance. So that that looks super fun with your cup of coffee and your partner and and. Uh, I think this was me a couple of days ago, so I don't know where you're working, but uh, around here, you know, forget forget any kind of uh, uh, identification of any kind. Anyway, that's that's standard issue uniform now, Dave. Yeah, exactly. 
So uh, we, um, we also have with us Michael Caduce, and uh, it is a, a pleasure to welcome Michael. He is the EMT program director at UCLA at the Center for Pre-Hospital Care. And at Michael, I tease Michael a lot. He's from Iowa, started at Urbandale Fire Department uh, as a firefighter paramedic and uh, has, has been a uh, paramedic coordinator uh, at the University of Iowa. He also was uh, with us in Australia. He recently went to uh, Singapore and Kazakhstan and, and, uh, and of course they lost his luggage. So I found a picture uh, that probably he's not gonna be happy with me about, but uh, he's, he, the only thing they had was a Superman t-shirt. And uh, so he's teaching in a t-shirt and, and I thought that was a great way to say, you know, uh, whether you're remote or local or uh, it, you are a super instructor. So welcome and thank you for coming on with us today uh, for this webinar. Thanks, Dave, honored to be here. So we're gonna start a little bit with uh, a poll because we the interactivity is actually really important in webinars. It's really boring to just kind of watch people talk. And uh, John will kick up uh, the, the uh, poll itself. And we wanna ask you, what's your experience with this? So when we're talking to the audience, there's a lot of us on the line. We really appreciate your attendance. What kind of experience do you have doing these kinds of events? And I know, Dave, the first time I did a webinar, uh, it was really nerve wracking and uh, it's way different than uh, being attending. I could tell you that attending a webinar versus hosting or teaching live online. Um, I, I went kicking and screaming for many years about teaching online and look at me now. I have a whole setup of how to teach online. Yeah. And Michael, have you done a an, an hybrid class at all? We have done some NAEMT hybrid classes, Dave. Um, actually, one of the things I like best about some of the hybrid classes is when our students come together for the skills portion or for the simulations, um, they've all pulled different things out of the reading and out of the online lectures, um, which is different than when we're up there speaking in front of them. Sometimes we emphasize the same thing, but they get to bring their own um, tidbits to the class, add in different discussion points. Um, and usually everybody has a little bit different perspective on the reading or on the slides. So um, it's definitely a different environment. You know, I love it. We we are uh, split near 50-50. Some people are teaching online, like 42%. You saw the results of that poll. Uh, so uh, all polling uh, centers were reporting in, and that's that's kind of that's kind of cool. Uh, I also saw that 50% have don't have experience and want to want to try it. So um, we're gonna pull from the experience of the people who are teaching and make sure to uh, participate with us. There's uh, uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions, use the Q&A area, and obviously reach out if you're having any kind of struggles. I know that NAEMT wants to help uh, our instructors and, uh, and, and, uh, and training centers do the best we can under these difficult circumstances and everybody's uh, kind of muddling their way or either, uh, you know, kicking and screaming or, or pushed into the virtual world. So uh, let's let's do the best we can. We still need to train EM, EMS providers. So I uh, got to find a way to do it. And, and like we are, we're resilient in our work. So we'll find a way. Uh, let's uh, start our, our uh, talk with a little bit of uh, the didactic components. So we were talking really about theory and the cognitive material. And the question really is, is it the same teaching online as in person? That's a great so, picture of you, Dave. Oh, <laughs> I'm moving on, moving on. Yeah, actually it feels that way this morning. Uh, I've been a little hoarse since I've been talking too much and online, but uh, uh, we, we try as much as we can to do evidence-based recommendations at NEMT and with NEMT. Uh, project. So uh, we thought we would share with you a bit of the peer review guide from Penn State. This is a, a, a meta-analysis in a systematic review of, of what the what all of the research would tell us about how to best teach. And here, uh, instructor to student contact was really important. So things like being really welcoming, uh, having the energy to sort of uh, interact with the students and participants. 
Um, make, make sure your announcements are prominent so people don't miss them. It's easy with the digital world to get messages left and right, not know exactly where to log in, not know where to go, and get questions answered rapidly, whether it's offline, before or after the events that are, that are live. We chose to focus this webinar on live events, but we're going to touch on some of the asynchronous or things that we can do outside of the live event to enhance the experience during the live event. Now, uh, obviously just show up. So uh, being there, being on time, uh, being early, we were logged in two hours before this webinar began uh, for the exact reason that our computers might crash and one of them did. And the, all of these things are normal. So don't expect everything to go right and uh, also be available offline during uh, some office hours, either announced or posted or available by appointment. Uh, that was another best practice by the evidence. Student interactivity, again, is huge. So group communication methods, uh, you're seeing a WhatsApp group chat that we set up for a UCLA class we're doing with Al Hyatt and, and the, in, the UAE, uh, so Abu Dhabi. And, they uh, communicate with each other, they send each other files and videos, and we're able to, in real time, very quickly say, oh, it looks like the internet is down, or we need to take a quick break, and it's outside of the, of the normal webinar flow so that we can, uh, uh, if, if our platform fails, we have some sort of backup. We put students in teams, which I, I was pleased to hear was another best practice. Thank goodness we did it. Uh, and so those teams can help each other. So the first line of defense is kind of your peers and they help each other uh, 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 with any knowledge or information. Are you seeing the same thing? Are you hearing the same thing? What am I supposed to do? And then they can work together to do group projects as well as uh, discussions. So we'll talk more about discussions, but the interaction to solve problems and, and participate. So be human, just you know, being nice actually matters. Uh, here more than ever, you don't have that, that ability to break the, the barrier of the, of the technology and, and imagine yourself in their shoes without really actually being able to speak and, and interact when you want to interact. Dave, I love this photo of all of the smiles. Um, and every time I see Elkin smile, it automatically makes me smile. But that reminds me, every time I'm online, I try to make sure my energy level is up. I'm engaged. I'm smiling. I'm trying to pull the audience in. Um, I think that's a little bit more work than when we're standing in front of students. We can read their body language a little bit easier. Um, really having the energy level to get out there, smile, welcome students. Um, and during the entire session, you have to be engaged and energetic. You know, I love this picture too. And El Elkin Fuentes is, uh, you know, he, he's he's a military guy. He can, you know, you know, kill you with the pinky. But he's so sweet, so nice. And and uh, he did this uh, PTEP program just a couple of days ago. Uh, and you can see everyone's just happy to interact and 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 share and and be uh, participating. Uh, no matter where they are, this was for training centers that are just learning how to do this in Spanish and. And I, I just love the fact that he, he can create community even through the virtual world. So uh, very lucky to have very talented educators all over the world. And, and it's empowering to, to, and, and, and it just feels like a family really. So I, I imagine this is probably you falling off this source. Uh, I don't know, are, are, you, are you pretty good at that? This, uh, this is exactly what it was like. If I tried to ride a horse, um, I would definitely fall off. This is actually a case study that we did with our paramedic group. Um, so we were able to do some case studies in small groups with our paramedic students. Um, and we actually incorporated some brief scenarios like you see here. Um, and then we have the reality program on all of our iSimulates. So we were actually able to embed the cardiac monitor into the PowerPoint so they could just go through when they asked for it, it would come up. Uh, if students needed to push a certain button or if we were covering cardiac scenarios where we would want them to make Make sure they were pressing the sync button before they cardioverted. Um, we actually would just have them draw on the screen. Um, they can do that within the Zoom that we were using. Um, quite effective way to actually do case studies um, and engage students. I love it. I love it that you can use those uh, uh, EKGs too. 
A couple other things that we've actually found has been quite helpful for all of our students is to ensure that our course content is organized. Um, when you're not in front of students every day and you can't just give them announcements and they can ask questions about what's coming, um, what we've found is that they're super appreciative when you can tell them anything that's coming up. So schedules, assignments, deadlines, exams. Um, we actually went through our LMS, our learning management system, and added the week of the content to each one of the modules they have. Um, it was a simple thing that we did and actually got tons of feedback from students that they loved it, that it was so helpful that they could see what they were doing this week. They could help read ahead if they needed to know what was next week. Um, it was really simple for us to do, um, but got us a ton of great feedback from students. So I think that's a really easy thing to do in terms of keeping students on schedule, organized, um, letting them know what's coming next. I love it. Let, let's do another poll here because I, I think uh, uh, this gets us involved. We had 65% of the people on uh, participating uh, this last time. And so we, we want to try again and uh, see if we can get even higher. And some of those, that 7% that was like, run away, run away. So um, uh, if you have, because we had a lot of people who do actually teach online, if you've created uh, 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 some content you know what this is about i know felix you love to do that is yes, uh, create I, your own I, stuff. I love i love to create content now it's one of my favorite things but uh if you ask me this question david uh 10 years ago um i'll be like create my own content no i walk around with 10 external drives in my pocket and i go to these conferences to see what can i steal and download from other people i want to use other people's content so yeah now i'm, I'm a creator i love doing that uh publishers also have phenomenal content so uh that if you if you don't have that creative mind get with your publisher they have great content and uh youtube and vimeo works well i like to say youtube vimeo i use it to host my videos so students if they have weak internet, they don't have to upload or download. It streams it, which works real well. Yeah, you know, I love it. Um, and only 10% said, I got nothing, man. Send help. Help me right now. Uh, we all got something. We all got something. There's an important recognition there that probably at all points in time in our careers, we were in that, I got nothing, please save me. EMS is a team sport. Gosh, we've all got content we've created. If you have content, share it. If you need something, ask. We probably have it. We've probably made it before. We actually put up an EMS educators resource page at UCLA, um, recognizing that this was a difficult time for everybody, and we've been doing this for a while. We've got tons of stuff. Um, use it. Um, if you need something, ask. It's a team sport. We can probably help you out. Love it, love it. Well, um, why don't uh, let, let's talk a little bit, Felix, about kind of how this async. What's asynchronous anyway? Well, uh, asynchronous. That's a great question, Dave. Asynchronous is um, be able to put content, uh, whether it be online or through a webinar or through your learning management system, where people, uh, students, have to do the work prior to class or view some content for class. So it's kind of the homework or the work you want them to do prior to coming to school. Being prepared is important. It's no more about just reading a textbook. It's about knowing what you're preparing for. Uh, I'm a fan of pre-recorded lectures. I'm such a fan. I built a broadcasting studio, green studio at my facility. Why? Because the feedback I got from my students and how they retained information was unbelievable. I actually surveyed my students and found out the two biggest questions that uh, were uh, negative impact towards our organization was students said they wish they could hear a lecture. A lecture was great. They just wish they could hear it more than once. They also said the lecture started out at a good pace, but then we got pressed for time and then they sped up and then they lost me. So with a podcast, they could watch it as many times as they want and at their own pace. So it works real, real well. Uh, PowerPoints, uh, PowerPoints have a great feature inside now, especially the new uh, 360. You have the ability to record voice over every single slide. So if you don't have the technology, you don't have those resources, all you need is really a microphone, your PowerPoint, and you can talk every, over every slide. It would embed it into the slide, and now you have a what we call a pre-lecture um, presentation. Discussion boards work phenomenal. I love discussion boards. It really creates a dialect of information and how students start participating. Because sometimes a student can post something, another student will respond, and you start seeing, are they picking up what you're putting down? But I always say um, what brings value to discussion boards is the interactive of the, the, interactive of the instructor. Graphic organizers, I'm going to have to go ahead and say uh, 
you know, I owe this one to Dave Page. When Dave Page first oh, came no. to me with the, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, with the graphic organizer, I gave him the political answer. Like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. That's great. All right, see you later. But I implemented it, and, and now I'm a huge fan of graphic organizers. It really helps the student organize information. Uh, so when you have to overwhelm them with a lot of information, it helps put it into perspective. I actually allow my students to bring their graphic organizers into simulation as a, as a point of reference. I, I want to echo Felix on the podcast and the recorded PowerPoints. Um, our students always want something. What can I listen to while I'm in traffic? What can I listen to while I'm at the gym? Um, additional resources that are recorded and not video, so they're low bandwidth. They don't have to be, they're not huge to download. Um, the podcasts so get us great feedback from students. Um, and when I get feedback from students that says, I like these, I at least know they're listening to it. Love it, love it. You know, I uh, I also want to just make sure uh, people know we've got uh, great online participants and uh, from all over the world. So hello to Ahed in in Dubai and and Luciano in Argentina, uh, uh, diehard uh, NAEMT members. So to, again, use the Q and A area if if you have uh, questions. And as we can kind of progress, we can uh, participate. We'll get them as answered as best we can. Uh, of course, Angel will will share uh, the links that uh, that we're able to and and uh, do our best. We're just uh, uh, so pleased, uh, blessed, and honored that we have so many participants on this on this broadcast. So, uh, very cool. Now, one of the areas that has been uh, quite uh, controversial has been this exam situation. So, how do you how do you really know that the students are learning anything? And um, I'm a big fan of exams. I think using the Socratic method, questions and answers, uh, gives you a sense of what people already know. So you're not covering stuff you already did or they already knew. Uh, I think it, that's one of the reasons why we did the polls right now to know exactly where we are, who, who, what kind of experience do you have? So um, in low stakes exams and, and practice exams, it's super easy for us to do really uh, uh, take home and, and, and simple, simple, you know, either email them some, some document, uh, do something that's more uh, um, like a pretest that we do for PHDLS or, or EPC. Uh, that's that's kind of a an easy way to to handle those low stakes exams. The learning management systems have questions. I know uh, 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 systems to create quizzes. So if you if you have access to a learning management system, Moodle is a great platform. It's free, and uh, we also have uh, a wonderful uh, uh, opportunity to to sort of engage that kind of workbook like. Uh, let's study and 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 find the material that we need before the class. So we really encourage you to flip that classroom. That's the the key thing, and and have them study on their own. Uh, one of one example is a FISDAP study tools exam, very predictive of registry pass rates if you're doing initial education, and it's unsecured, so it's not on the on the secure side. But uh, if if you do want to do more secure testing, then we're going to have to get creative during this pandemic. And it's not ideal. Uh, uh, the registry has come up with some some ideas to, on how uh, initial educa education can do some temporary certifications. At UCLA, we've done some of that. So uh, kudos to Katie O'Connor and the team of the paramedic program, as well as Michael with the EMTs that uh, we're trying to find ways to temporarily get people certified so they can at least get out there and help and work. But uh, we, we do sometimes have NAEMT instructors who are at the station who can help out. And if that's, if that's possible, then we can have a trusted mentor proctor who is not going to unsecure the exam and it is going to be able to administer the exam in, in the uh, security and, and, um, uh, and, and with the parameters that we know, it's really actually that student who's taking the exam and they're not doing it, they're not doing it with any uh, additional aids. I do love, by the way, the cone resuscitation uh, that uh, Felix contributed because uh, they apparently ran over the cone. So mm -hmm. it just reminds us to say, well, under these circumstances, it might not be perfect. So the skills might be done a little bit differently. <laughs> Hopefully not a cone versus a mannequin in CPR, but sometimes you do just... Do what you can with what you've got is the answer. And some of us are actually working out there. So uh, uh, with all social distancing uh, rules in place, we can do what we can. 
and now, and the cone Dave is 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 also uh, a good a reminder of how important it is to uh, keep your head on a swivel when you drive because things you can hit such as little kids and that's why I try to drive home with them when they have to get out and do something so silly as CPR on a cone they start to realize I don't want to go back out and hit a cone again. Love it, love it. The whole experiential education kind of immerse them in it. Uh, I think we're we're all about skills video or, or skills interaction and and scenarios and cases. That's what NAMT courses are all about. So let's not take that out completely, uh, and let's find a way to get get people certified or or wait and do the exam later when uh, restrictions are a little lighter. We might be able to actually conduct some of these tests. Uh, the in-person skills exams later, so do the didactic now, and then defer later to that so they can be in the best environments, uh, make sure we're cleaning the supplies between uh, times. So let's let's do the best we can, and, and uh, with that, we might have the opportunity to do some secure testing. Now, on top of that, NAMT and, and others uh, have said, you know, it, it's appropriate if you're doing high stakes testing and you don't want to unsecure the exam to use something like uh, these third party uh, software services like ProctorU and Respondus is another one. Um, these systems do have a built in way of having a proctor view the screen of the participant and the video around them. So with some video and audio, you have some sense of security, but I have to say, I can uh, pick up my phone and actually be filming off camera, right? So I'm off camera over here filming and pick up all the questions and then share them with the next person who's gonna take the test. So um, not that you have any experience with that, Michael? Right. Um, we, we do. We do high stakes testing and we recognize that our high stakes testing needs to continue in order to get more providers out into the workforce, especially during the pandemic. Um, we even pre COVID, we used a proctoring service. They track pupil movement. They make sure students aren't looking off the screen and all kinds of stuff. And yet we still know cheating exists. We had a, a group of students we had to investigate. They were using the proctoring service um, and then um, finished the exam, but left the proctoring service on and then went into a Google Doc and started typing in test questions. Um, you know, fortunately that was recorded and we could investigate it, but um, I think it always reminds us that we need to be involved in item writing and item creation. So um, even pre-COVID our exams, we know we have to continue creating more of them and more questions. So um, even using these services isn't 100% fail safe. Um, I think the one thing that I like to note is that sometimes this can get us in trouble um, and we really need yes, to recognize that. We can that get really screwed about this, yeah. so it's kind of a bad deal. 100% uh, agree. If we can be student centric in our exams, if I can't ensure that in this high stress environment that a student's going to have no resources available to them, maybe I switch some of my exams or I use some older exams or I crowdsource some exams um, and use those and make them open note or open text. We know the American Heart Association allows for open note tests um, and maybe recognize that in this pandemic, I do need to change some of the things that I'm doing. Um, yeah. We know there's learning that does take place when students look up test questions. It's it's just it's really hard to do good exams, right? The, the COE accredited schools and for initial paramedic education know the process that we go through to validate an exam, and and if we just kind of unsecure them, then when this is over and we want to use a secure exam, it won't just be easy for us to just pull a secured exam from somewhere and have it already be valid. So probably better to uh, kind of like the registry did, because just sort of just hold for that, use them a little bit later, use some things that are already unsecured, and and certainly uh, we we do uh, we, we can do the best we can, but um, but let's not shoot ourselves in the foot for a few weeks from now. And we we might actually disagree on this on this panel. It'll be interesting to see because I think Felix, you've been doing some testing. And um, you, you have used some um, uh, remote monitoring, right? Oh, you're on mute, so uh, yeah, we cannot hear you. This is a great way to win an argument, actually. You keep the other presenter on mute, and yeah. then that way, whatever so, says, thank you. He did, he did for that your, purposely, because I'm the guy who's gonna agree to disagree <laughs> um, uh, with Dave you're when right. it comes you're to right. Exam. So uh, uh, he tried to sabotage my microphone here, but um, 
uh, we could agree to disagree, and I'm going to play the devil's advocate on this, is not all of us have the opportunity or have uh, the time allotted in our program in this current situation that we're in to default this exam for four, five, six weeks later. Um, we have to stay on task because there's other things we have to do when we get back, such as maybe starting doing clinicals and simulation because these departments, these hospitals are closed to students. So what I do is I like to say, you know, uh, I have not had I, most of my exam. This is new to me, so I want you to know that most of my exams, oh, all my exams, actually has been residential, brick and mortar with a proctor. And even then, we still find students still find ways to test, uh, to cheat, I should say. And the reason why I say that, if, cheat, if students didn't cheat, I wouldn't have a simulation or uh, computer lab room where I have seven cameras inside watching every angle of the students, because students, if they're going to cheat, they're going to find a way. So it's no different from finding a way to cheat residentially versus distance. So what we have to do is just kind of make it as comp uh, complex as we can or hard as we can for these students not to cheat. So what I do is I use my learning management system, which I use Canvas, and I have big blue button that's actually embedded into it. And what I tell them to do is, as you can see here in this video, is they have to activate their microphone. It's a must. I got it. I have to hear everything that's going on around them. Second, they have to activate their camera. They have to have a camera and it has to be uh, facing them. It has to be close distance where I can see their eye movement. And then I tell them, read me something from your screen so I can watch their eye movement and get a kind of baseline of where their eye should be. Secondly, I have them share their entire screen, not, not a tab, but the entire screen so I can see all activities going on at their computer. So is it 100%? Security? Absolutely not. But it's something. Something's better than nothing. It's really almost as similar to having a proctor working, walking around in a room watching a student test. Doesn't say they can't drop it, pick it up. I do recommend, and what I will say is, when I initially started this, I would do a large class, and I realized uh, the span of control is significant. I realized having 10 students is probably not the best idea. Uh, three to five, I would say five is your max with the idea of being three students at a time. So so schedule it. Maybe schedule three students at nine, nine to nine to 10, and then 10 to 12, and then 12, or, so, or have other lab instructors who could come in and proctor uh, students as well. So those are things that I, love I, I um, truly recommend. Yeah, so, so uh, um, I love that we're doing the best we can. And so because you're uh, getting your tests unsecured, I'm sure you've started writing more. Uh, test questions. So uh, when you were, it, nobody knows this, but Felix <laughs> survived COVID-19. He's a survivor. Uh, you know, you beat the bug, man. So, so uh, uh, you know, uh, kudos to you for that. And I'm sure all your free time now is spent writing test questions for when the pandemic is over and we need to have secure test questions. So, uh, Dave, so Dave, you know, are you flirting with me? Are you work. flirting with me and talking about you want me to come write <laughs> test questions with you? <laughs> Absolutely. We all we all should participate. As educators, it, it should be part of our responsibility to participate. The great the great thing about writing test questions is you start learning how questions are written. And, and 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 the systems that people use to write these questions and students can benefit and then you become a, a better test writer. So true, so true. Uh, we've we've really been working on on making sure that the AMLS exam, the PHTLX is PHTLS exam. Uh, they're, that they're actually validated. So um, important to pilot test them, see how they work, and then and then uh, make sure that our measurements are accurate. And I do like uh, I think uh, Chris O'Connor uh, or, or Brian or somebody uh, online here commented about you know we they they also uh, I think open book tests are a good idea. So for low stakes exams, I totally agree. And continuing education uh, when we want to have people look up information that. That's really good. That's good uh, culture of safety to you know use checklists and keep checking back on what we know. So I think uh, it's not all about the absolutely success. Let's transition it to skills now and go into the psychomotor world. Um, so the practical skills. And uh, again, we want to hear from you a little bit. So uh, uh, what uh, what is your experience? Uh, did you know that NAMT had hybrid courses? And uh, and have you taught any? Uh, so have you done the didactic part of some of these courses? And uh, right away, uh, 
um, there's there's quite a few people who've done it. Uh, Michael, you mentioned that you had done it and it, you seem to like it. Yeah, I think we've had um, great responses with students in terms of them coming to class um, only one day. It makes it super easy when you've got people that are on shift and they can't, um, departments that can't send someone for a two day class, um, uh, being able to complete the course online and then come to course for the skills part um, really does have a great benefit, especially for the providers that are already out there and just need this as continuing education. I'm gonna tell you guys, hybrid's the new sexy. <laughs> Of course, of course. Um, it, it's uh, 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 I I would imagine hybrid is the new sexy. Uh, well, I love it, and uh, uh, I love that you had these. Uh, so uh, there's like 20% of the audience is saying, "Yeah, I love it," um, and uh, and then another 20% has taught them. So that's really exciting to know. I'm glad that uh, that we have some experience in the room, and please do share what you've learned because we we'd we'd like to know uh, best tricks and trade tricks of the trade, and we hope that if this webinar is really a uh, 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 useful uh, platform, might do more if uh, if in fact uh, our membership wants it. Uh, I also love the little hearts that are going on while we're talking. It's uh, it's fun to see them pop up when uh, uh, when Felix's face is up there. You know, clearly they like you, Felix. I don't know. They also like Elkin. Elkin Fuentes gets a lot of love all over the world. So uh, do love the 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 hearts, and that's another form of great audience participation. And when you have large groups like this, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people are tuned in right now. So if I make a stupid mistake, I'm sure many people will hear it. So let's but let's get into the skills a little bit. And um, Felix, you want to talk a little bit about asynchronous yeah, here? Uh, absolutely. Once again, asynchronous is pretty much uh, preparing and doing things uh, outside of the online platform that is live. So um, as this video that I show you here, I prepared a instructional video to my students of I give my students a scenario, my EMT students a scenario every week. And then they have to go ahead and record themselves doing a patient assessment based on this scenario. So I told them they have a 65 year old female who's in the bathroom complaining of chest pain. Now the students, has, they have to go to their bathroom, get a family member, uh, put them in there, they're 65 years old and the scenario takes place in the bathroom on the toilet. So they talk about what about equipment, Felix? So what I did here was I got a phone cable because who uses a phone nowadays? Oh, I, so I love a, this. I, <laughs> I love it. I a phone it. cable, uh, I, I looped it around, I put a piece of tape and then I got me a Bic pen. I cut That's it a lot of hearts there, and I slid it down and now I made a nasal cannula. And <laughs> then I got a spray bottle and on that spray bottle I wrote, oxygen slash USP and I told my students what does that mean and what that makes it medical grade oxygen and I, I told them I wanted to I wanted them to put the PSI on the type of tank they would have so it should be a full tank and then if it's a green tank they should write green on it and then put a piece of tape in it on you drop it right in uh, the the cable on the top and that tells me you plugged in your oxygen so you could do things like that everybody should has a blood should have a blood pressure cuff and a scope and they could use that and then my students will come back and now video uh, themselves doing it uh, as you'll see down the line I have a student her brother is videotaping and the sister is participating. So that's asynchronous. When we get into synchronous now, synchronous is now I'm providing them a video of live and showing them exactly how I would like to see this uh, patient assessment demonstrated. And then now we could break into small groups through our learning management system, through our online platform. And now you could bring your lab instructors in online and now you could bring them into smaller groups where you have a better span of control. And then now you put four to six students in each one of those groups through your online platform and then have your instructor, your lab instructor, evaluate them now performing the skill on their family member or friend or whoever's in the house with them or a mannequin or, or maybe a few pillows that they act in as a, as a mannequin. So uh, that's what we refer to synchronous. So there is ways to do skills. Now, if you would ask me this 10, 15 years ago, I would say absolutely there's no way to do skills online. But with the technologies that we have available to us now and the way and all the resources, this is something that's in our future. This is something uh, I know we a lot of us, our hands with force to this because of the COVID virus, but this is something where students can benefit 
a, a tool at, at their exposure at home and then prepare that student when they come to class. I love it. And, and the more creative we get, the better. I think, uh, uh, again, don't forget that people are still at work. I'm still going to a station and I still could potentially evaluate somebody's skills if we had the opportunity. Uh, I was retested for recredentialing, so it's uh, uh, it's not impossible, especially you know just you know the social distancing, cleaning the mannequins, et cetera, et cetera. But um, but we do have to keep our skills up, and I think it's important. And don't it's another forget, tool in the toolbox. Yeah, it's just another way to do it, and and um, the the stronger, the more flexible we are, the stronger we are. Just like any muscle. Uh, I also want to just point out that many of the skill videos you can share uh, by sharing your screen online. So uh, in the instructor toolkits that are part of the NAEMT courses, you can easily uh, play the video like I am doing right now. Now this is embedded in a PowerPoint, but you don't have to have it embedded in a PowerPoint. When you're sharing your screen on an online, on an online pr platform, you just simply project the screen and uh, that's how we we uh, can show uh, just the same things that we would show in class. I also think uh, we're stronger together. So uh, and you don't need to be reinventing the wheel, whether it's material that we have available from NAEMT that's part of the course already, or uh, in some cases, like uh, uh, there's, uh, we did a crew resource management video and th that uh, link is available and out there, as well as the Wisconsin um, Technical Colleges all videoed every EMT skill in many of the paramedic lectures. So those are assignable if you like what they did. If you want to do your own, you can do your own. And, and thank you, Michael, for providing the link to the UCLA skill videos where our students go. But uh, uh, wonderful to see that. So. We didn't get as many hearts on there. What happened? The hearts went away. Hey, oh, there you are. You love, ah, you love it. Ah, good. good. Well, it's because Felix came back online. That's why the hearts started. Forget the skills, you know, the, the it, yeah, okay, good, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and um, I do want to get to questions, so we're going to uh, move through this a little bit quickly. Yes. But tell us so about this, this right here is a uh, asynchronous video. So uh, if you notice the video, Prior, I actually demonstrated um, what they could do and I gave them a structural video. So this is the student now giving me back her video, showing me how she developed her pieces of equipment and what she's using and how she's going to demonstrate the scenario I gave her utilizing her, her family members and what she has in her house and her bathroom. Now, a lot of people say, well, when we, when we develop these uh, videos, Felix, where can we place them for view? Well, you could create a private YouTube channel. You could use Vimeo. You could use Google Drive. Uh, there's so many other avenues out there that you can actually create one one library for all your students. Uh, uh, YouTube is free. You could create it. You can make it private and only invite your students so they have access to all this. It becomes a grading platform. It becomes a, a, a resource for these students. Love it. And um, uh, Michael Caduce has been doing some of that as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about this asynchronous piece that you're doing. Absolutely. Um, and uh, more than anything, I love seeing the students' creativity in terms of how they create some of these skills. So um, we recognize that some skills we can do live over Zoom, but also students have iPhones, Android phones. If they can record themselves doing a video of a skill or skills demonstration um, and then share it to Google, create a shareable link. We actually have a forum on our learning management software um, where students just post the link. Students can give them feedback um, and post then the comments. Hey, this was great. Hey, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Um, we do all skills tracking. Every skill gets tracked. So this actually allows us to peer review and instructor review skills, um, which is key. We also have one of our instructors, Lana Walters, who is amazing with Flipgrid. Um, she can make this thing do all kinds of stuff. So we've actually transformed it into student introductions. Um, they now do skills on Flipgrid. They share it. Their peers can give them feedback. Um, and again, we can track it as part of our skills tracking. Love it. We've been keeping John very busy <clears throat> with questions. So we really, really appreciate that. And uh, we'll try to do the best we can to, to get at, at, at some of these. There's just a lot of them, so uh, I, I uh, really appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's do a little bit of tech talk. And uh, uh, when we get to the technology piece, some people are just going, how do I do this? What, what tools are you using? So um, uh, we can get really fancy. You know, if you're Felix, you're, you're just like, 
whoa, this is super, super intense. Uh, this is a picture of his uh, two of his screens. Like, you I'm know, when geeked Felix, out with technology. When, I'm geeked when out. Felix with turns it. on his computer, like the, all the lights dim in Orlando, and then every gamer in the world goes, "Ah, oh, Felix is online. I can't play anymore." So um, you can get very fancy. This this headset is a twenty dollar a headset. It's an MPOW headset, but you can find plenty of them. And I think you can hear me okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay. So it, it doesn't need to be everything for all people. And uh, I know Elkin, for example, is using an iPad to do uh, when he did the GEMS course, which he incidentally also did skills. Uh, he had the students actually do all the exercises we do with GEMS, walking with a cane and, and taping this, their fingers together. He had a video of how to do that while they were at home with home, home equipment. So it is possible for them to have that sensitization experience. Now, I do recommend that you, you have uh, lots of hearts. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you. I do recommend you have a second screen uh, because uh, that way you can project on one screen and then uh, have, the, have the webinar software running on the other screen. Uh, I, I have my laptop hooked up to two and so that, that helps quite a bit. Uh, but uh, in general, one computer can actually do it just fine. So you don't need to get fancy in order to get there. So let's do another little poll just to see what you're using. If you're using a learning management system, what learning management system are you using? I'm biased. I use Canvas. I am such a fan of Canvas. You are I such a you. fan. I'm telling yeah, you, every chance you I, get, yeah. you're like, hey, use Canvas. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's crazy. Like, they actually have, and actually what they have, <laughs> Dave, they have a, a, a Canvas conference call, InstructorCon, uh, every July. It's pretty cool. And all the cool features you get to see. What I like about Canvas, it's an open platform. So pretty much everything is integratable. Like uh, Mike was talking about Flipgrid. Flipgrid has an app that can make it integratable uh, to Canvas. I use Neopods, it's integratable to Canvas. So it gives the students a one place to go and they have all their resources. Love We're it. seeing some great things come from our ed tech people too, um, in terms of incorporating Google Classroom, which allows you to use tons of Google apps within the platform. Um, and I also think worth noting, um, we use the JBL platform because it comes with the textbook um, and it's one less system for students to learn. So we can incorporate a lot of different things into Moodle um, as well, which is as that nav2 platform. Pool is pretty yeah. diverse. And Moodle, Moodle is uh, free. Uh, but it also comes with the textbooks if you're using that textbook. So very malleable, thanks to the Australians for creating that open source uh, and uh, and have our uh, the entire world uh, uh, be able to use it. So uh, I do love our poll there. And, and uh, then you know, forget about it, 16%. I think you're catching on now. It's good. Okay. Well, uh, we want to get to questions. So a little bit more about technology here. Uh, Felix, we're just going to limit you to 30 seconds on the use of Canvas because, you know, you love it. Okay, real simple. Love Canvas. Great system. If you're looking for a learning management system, I will tell you, do some research, talk with Canvas. It's very inexpensive and it's the best in the world. And I've used Blackboard. I use Moodle. I use all of them. Canvas seems to be the best for me. Done. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, um, and, and let's talk a little bit about... Uh, at, uh, different than a learning management system, have you, if you have been teaching or participating in, in webinars, which platforms have you been using so that uh, we can kind of understand that a little bit? And uh, I do love the, oh, there's a nice response to this poll and and I'm uh, thank you for keeping it open here so that everybody gets to vote. Uh, John John's running the the tech on the back end, which is really also a best practice uh, to be able to manage that. But uh, Zoom is getting uh, massive attention these days, and uh, it's a uh, it's a nice platform. Michael, you're using Zoom a lot, and and we did we used Adobe Connect at UCLA for a while. Uh, different tools have different uh, features, but uh, uh, I think you know the the fact that it, that Zoom can be free for a limited amount of people and and a limited amount of time is definitely an option. And we're using GoToWebinar right now. Yeah, yeah, nice. That's um, <clears throat> a it's a that's a really great uh, uh, platform. Uh, you know, uh, Elkin 
jumped on Zoom for this GEMS course he did online. Um, excellent work with uh, uh, with having people uh, participate, taking program breaks because an eight hour day in front of a computer is horrible. So if you can chop it up into multiple days, or if you're going to do it all day long, you're going to have times to to uh, have people you know take a break. That's important. But uh, the interactivity inside either polls or uh, having uh, the chat area be interactive is a great way to do it. And he he did use uh, one of the pretest in in uh, Survey Monkeys, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, lots of options here to deliver the uh, the content in in a an alternative format. I agree, Dave. There's a uh, plenty of options that are out there for folks that want to use different ones. Um, we mentioned Zoom. It does have a free version, um, but just note if you are going to use the free version, you're limited to 45 minutes and 100 users. Um, that's usually not long enough for us to get a full lecture in. Um, a lot of employers and hospital groups actually have a Zoom Pro account. Um, worth looking into. It's pretty inexpensive, um, but does allow you to do that. One of the features of Zoom that we really like is that you can upload to the cloud. You do have to pay for that service, but uh, some of these five files with videos can get pretty big um, and daunting in terms of trying to convert it. Um, we actually do use Adobe Connect and one of the my favorite features of Adobe Connect is one it does just about everything Zoom does but we have a uh, cloud storage with that so if I want to share a lecture with a student it produces a URL to do that. Um, I do like too that it allows students to create an account so that if a student a student has a login they have a password um, so we do have a little bit of a, a little bit more secure system than that. Um, there's a few others out there. Go to Meeting is a good one. Um, again, it's free for the user, but if you're going to teach on it, you probably need to pay for it. Um, the upgrade, it's about $12 a month for an upgraded Go to Meeting or Go to Webinar account, so that's not super expensive. If you're already using Microsoft Office and you have the 365 package, um, you might check to see if you already have Teams. If you don't, Teams is a pretty inexpensive add-on that allows you to do just about all the things that are allowed in Zoom. Um, and if you're using 365, then it actually allows you to share documents and stuff a little bit easier. Um, if not, it's about $12 as well to add on to your Microsoft 360 package. Um, and then Skype is another great feature if all you're doing is looking to have some conference calls, um, have some small group student discussions. Um, Skype is another free version um, that you can use pretty easily for making phone calls or web calls. And sometimes some countries block one thing or another. Thank you, Robert uh, Sklar here. He's sharing uh, another tool that uh, is called Blue Jeans, and I hope that's not what he's wearing, but uh, uh, maybe that's actually an online tool. <laughs> but uh, we 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 have uh, uh, Google Classroom. We, we by no means wanted to be comprehensive. Just kind of show you some quick and easy options, and um, make sure that we can you know cover that. Uh, Felix, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of this this uh, 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 big blue button thing? Oh, you're you're I, now you're muted all by yourself. Now before I was kind of sabotaging you, but now you you're your own sabotage. Uh, I was trying to set you up, Dave. Um, yeah, yeah. We use big blue button for those who are Canvas users uh, and structure users. Um, it's embedded into uh, the LMS system, so it's a one-stop shop. What I love about it, it has uh, all the capabilities. It's free, by the way, for Canvas users. Uh, it might be free for everybody else, I'm not certain, but definitely for Canvas is free and it's embedded in there. Uh, it has recording features, so it can record. This is example, this picture right here is when you play it back, this is what it looks like. The free version only records up to uh, 14, archives it for 14 days. If you want it more than 14 days, you have to pay for that subscription. Uh, it has a whiteboard, it has uh, share screening. You could, you could give the screen to the student, so if they want to do a presentation, um, you could bring Kahoot into it. Uh, I love Kahoot. I do focus lectures, which focus lectures is something we do synchronous. It's the meat and potatoes of a lecture that we provide to our students. Instead of sitting there, 20, 30 slides, takes about 40 minutes, calls it a day. We can review schedule, what to prepare next day. We can go over analytics of our quizzes. So it has great capability, and, and that's what we use. And the recording feature is important for us. We like it because it records everything. It gives us our screen. It gives us our chat our chat room, as well as the video of our students who are live. So if that's really important to you, check out all the different platforms and make sure they provide you all those components that you are looking for, because there are some out there that just will provide you the shared screen only. So um, uh, I'm worried about time, and I think we should jump to questions. What do you think, Michael? Um, uh, 
Thank you, gentlemen, for sharing this uh, wealth of knowledge and the information today on uh, going virtual with EMS education. I was we have received quite uh, several uh, questions, a lot of great ones. Uh, one I'd like to share with you uh, uh, that I saw multiple come across. Uh, could you go into more detail on graphic organizers and provide us with some examples? Wow, yeah, um, that's interesting. Uh, so a graphic organizer is a way for people to organize similar information in their head. And the one we were showing you is like an example of a respiratory one. I'll pull that slide up here uh, real quick. But th the idea is to uh, give a topic, so low blood pressure, what causes low blood pressure? This is a graphic organizer we used for a flipped classroom. <clears throat> so we said breast sounds, you know, uh, crackles, that gets, you know, uh, what causes that? What causes wheezes? Can you find similarities between wheezes that are perhaps asthmatic? Is it the same thing as COPD? How do you organize all that information? And like Felix said, it's kind of like a file cabinet. It's an exercise they can do either in the classroom or at home in, in this virtual pandemic world. It's something you would uh, do at home. Uh, they are There's a ton of them in the flip classroom, uh, but um, it is hard to find them online and you'd have to check with other educators to see what they're willing to share. Yeah. And they're We're, very easy to develop. Yeah. Yeah. They're very easy to develop and uh, I swear by them. I, I've seen a significant improvement in students um, on the ability to organize and retain information. Yeah, cool. I completely agree. We, we use them on a regular basis. We have them for most of the different topics. Uh, great response, gents. Uh, one more quick question, uh, you know, I think that many of us ask as online educators and face-to-face -face educators is, you know, hybrid courses tend to produce students that do not retain the info as much as in person. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Are you, are you seeing any uh, uh, differences and, you know, that's, are they retaining the information? That's a great question. I love that question. Yeah, I'm that's thankful good. for whoever asked that question. And we do have uh, students like that. And that's why it's so important to make your online, even in classroom, and I'm going to preach this because I'm a flipaholic, is you have <laughs> to make not only in, in the, your residential program, but also online, make it fun. I, I believe that you bring, you need to bring face value to what you teach. And I use face as an acronym. It stands for fun, accessible, clear, and educational. And out of all those four things, the most wow. important is fun because fun becomes memorable. So make it interactive, put games. You, there's so many games out there you could, uh, uh, use in your program. I use Nearpods. Nearpods is a program I use to bring my in-classroom tech. And by the way, let me tell you, we do activities in our program. We don't really lecture. And when we went to online, I panicked. I was like, how do I put these class activities online? Well, I found Nearpods. Nearpods allows me to digitalize my, my activities. And now my students do the same activity they would in a classroom with a, a, a laminated cards we could do electronically so they get the same uh learning and they stay engaged and we learn and what i've learned with flip education just to let you guys know my attrition rate has dropped significantly students and do you're getting like at near 100 percent pass rates on first attempt and so is michael on on registry stuff uh, michael actually did uh, a study on whether hybrid emt was actually better or worse and what did you find um, I, I was going to say exactly, and I was going to echo that. It seems like that's the misconception that's out there. We looked at nearly a thousand students and compared our accelerated class, our traditional model versus our hybrid model, and found that the completion rates and the National Registry first and third attempt pass rates were the same. There was no statistical significance. That's large scale, same course material, same instructors, um, same course hours. All of that was the same um, yeah. and found that there was no difference. So I think so, you, it's all about the student. Um, some students prefer hybrid actually are, are more successful because that's what they yeah. want. It, might, and, it and, might just be a format that they choose or not choose. We, we are going to need to uh, wrap up. I know our, our students did not like having to go to online when we entered the pandemic, but they had to, you know, adjust. Um, 
we are coming to a close. Uh, before we, we end, I uh, apologize if we didn't get to your questions. We'll try our best. And if you like this, make sure to give us lots of love and many hearts. Uh, and uh, let and Lots of questions. That, and maybe we that, could uh, build further podcasts uh, based on those questions. Absolutely. Uh, guide us as to what you're, you're needing and, and we will find experts. Uh, um, I, 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 we also wanted to just take one quick second uh, and it's a moment of uh, extreme danger in our work and it's never been like this uh, as bad as it is today. And, um, and we will have providers who, who will uh, unfortunately you know, make that ultimate sacrifice as we have had in the past. So uh, I think it's important to just be with those people who even virtually who are sick at home, confined and quarantined. And um, just wanted to take that minute to acknowledge that what we do is really special. It's really important and uh, we're a family. So uh, let's watch out for each other and let's, let's make sure that we take that pause to remember those who uh, have made that ultimate sacrifice or those who are sick at home uh, now because of what, what they've come in contact with. So uh, let's stick together. And, and again, thank you NAMT uh, for, for having us. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you very much for thank joining. You for, uh, thank you to all the attendees that were able to join uh, today's webinar and those uh, serving on the front lines. We hope you found value in uh, the information presented. In about an hour, you should receive an email from the webinar platform information requesting your participation in an evaluation of today's webinar and providing information on how to apply for CE credit. Please note that certificates for CE are not immediate and require verification and creation by NAEMT education staff. You can anticipate receiving your certification in about a month's time frame. If you have any questions about CE or any further questions about future webinars, please feel free to contact education at naemt.org. This concludes our webinar. May you, your colleagues, and your community and your family remain healthy and stay safe. Thank you all.